Hello friend, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at what I think is the best budget setup for video under $1,500. That includes everything you're going to need to get started. When it comes to the gear, the camera is going to be the Fujifilm X-T3. This can be grabbed used for around $650. Lens is going to be the Sigma Art 18-35. This can be grabbed used for just over $400. You are going to need an adapter to adapt the lens to the camera. So for this, I'm going to recommend the KNF Concept Autofocus Adapter. It's around $200 new. There might be a used option out there, but buying this new might be your best bet. And then from there, just a few accessories you're going to need are a few SD cards. So I recommend two of the SanDisk Extreme Pro 256 gigabyte cards. This is going to run you around $70. And as far as additional batteries and a charger, I recommend picking up two that come with a charger. And this is going to run you around $30. The last thing that you might already have and might not need to buy is just a camera strap. I think a camera strap for someone starting out is a very versatile piece of gear. And so lots of options on Amazon if you don't already have one. Moving into why I would recommend this setup, we're going to look at price. So the total is around $1,354 pre-tax for an approximate total of under $1,500. I just went with approximate because if you are shopping this stuff used, like I would recommend, you know, shipping or tax or the various price of used items might fluctuate. When it comes to the image quality, I think what you are getting at this price point is really unmatched with other cameras in the market. And I think it is definitely good enough to begin working professionally. You're able to shoot 4K, 420, 10-bit internally, which is a great file to begin learning. Color grading gives you lots of latitude, and you're going to have the ability to shoot 4K 60 to get slow motion for B-roll, definitely something that you are going to be commonly shooting. There is going to be a slight crop with 4K 60, but for me, this was never a big deal. It wasn't something that I regularly noticed. This camera definitely cuts together well with more expensive cameras like the X-H2S. That is my primary cam. I regularly am using the X-T3 still to this day on interviews. And I think the quality, depending on the scenario you put it in, is pretty much indistinguishable unless you're needing a ton of dynamic range. And I've also shot the X-T3 alongside cameras like the RED and was able to match these quite easily in post. One of the main draws to Fujifilm is going to be their color science. And with this camera, you're gonna be getting great colors right out the box. And I think that's really important for beginners as you start to learn color grading, to be working with a file that looks good from the get-go, that maybe you can add a little bit of contrast and saturation. But if you didn't do anything else, the file is going to hold its own, especially for things like interviews, like corporate projects, like weddings. I think the colors look great, and it's gonna give you a great base to begin learning color grading and what your style is and where you want to push the image. This camera is going to give you good autofocus with face tracking. It's probably not the best out there on the market, but I think for this price point, it is incredible. I use the face tracking all the time, and most of the footage that you're going to see that I've shown throughout this video was shot with autofocus. Definitely not the easiest scenarios, some of these, and so I think it is plenty fine for people working professionally and needing reliable autofocus. The price point of this camera also makes it incredibly easy to grab a second camera body down the line as your business grows. It is incredibly important to have a second camera body if you are working professionally because if something happens to your main camera, you still need a camera to be able to complete that job or you're going to need a second camera for things like interviews. And so I think the price point of this makes it incredible for a beginner to really quickly, you know, be able to upgrade to a second body and they can continue to keep it down the line if they do upgrade to something like the X-H2S like I use. When it comes to cons, no camera is perfect. So I did want to speak to the cons of this camera, things that make it less than ideal, but kind of speak to them how I've been able to use it over the years and how they aren't really the biggest deal to me. The first and probably biggest con is going to be the lack of IBIS in this camera. It was introduced in the X-T4, but for me, this was not that big of a deal. I honestly loved getting to learn on a camera that did not have IBIS. I think it's made me a better shooter today and less reliant on it in settings. I learned how to use a camera strap to get stable footage without it. And I'm also gonna drop a recommendation at the very end of this video that might eliminate this concern with you all together. There's actually an alternate lens option that you might wanna consider if something like stabilization is important to you, but yeah, learn how to use a camera strap, shoot 4K60 for corporate videos, for weddings, when you are needing smooth footage, you know, not on a tripod. I think shooting 4K60 and learning how to do a little bit of stabilization in post can go a long way as you progress in your career. The next con is going to be the lens. And so it's not the tightest focal length and you might need something that has a little bit longer reach, but I think 
The 18 to 35 is a great starter lens for most scenarios, and it is still the lens that I primarily use to this day on my X-H2S. I think that gives you the ability to grow with it, and you can always pick up a cheaper, you know, tighter prime lens down the line, or a zoom lens if you find yourself shooting in scenarios where you need a tighter lens or you like that look. But I think starting out, I think learning how to shoot on the 18 to 35 is a great option. Next con is gonna be the lack of a flip screen. If you are wanting to film yourself for videos like YouTube, you might need something like an external monitor, which adds bulk to your setup. But again, this was not something that I was doing at the time, and I don't think it's essential for everybody. And the X-T3 can definitely be used to film yourself. It just might be a little bit harder as it doesn't have that flip screen. Next con will be the record limit of 30 minutes. So if you are forming longer form content, maybe like a wedding or interviews, you are going to have to restart the camera after 30 minutes. This is not the biggest deal. It's just something you have to keep in mind. You have to think about, you know, how long it has been running and just simply restart it once the clip dies. A final con that wasn't the biggest deal to me, but I think is important to mention is the lack of dual recording. So there is dual card slots, but you cannot dual record to both simultaneously. I think this just means you have to be careful with your memory cards. If your footage is on there, make sure to back it up. I just did a video about my entire backup workflow. If you guys are wanting how to safely back up your footage, I never ran into any issues of, you know, corrupt cards or something like that. But the lack of dual card slots, now that I have the X-H2S, I see that it is a con for some people. And if you are working professionally, that is just something to keep in mind. When it comes to who this setup and video is for, I think there are three people that come to mind. The first is someone who is wanting to start shooting professional video. So this could be things like weddings, corporate videos, interviews, things for a church, small businesses or music videos. You need a camera that is going to hold up and is going to be able to do all of those things. The next person is going to be someone who maybe video isn't your main thing, but you're wanting good quality for not the most amount of investment, but you're not wanting to, you know, buy something you're going to outgrow a few months down the line. I recommended this to several friends who are wanting to just document their daily life, maybe promote their music and are needing to start filming content for themselves. I think this camera is a great option at a great price point. I think the third person that this is for is someone who already has this exact setup or something similar. The encouragement here is just to look at some of the projects that I've shot over the years that I'm going to play in this video and kind of challenge you that you don't need to upgrade your camera. You don't need better gear to start making great work. I just wanted to end this video with a alternate recommendation as there has been some new gear that has come out since I purchased this. And so this would potentially solve the IBIS issue that is a con for you as well as the tighter focal length issue. And so for that lens wise, I'm actually gonna give a potential recommendation to the Tamron 17 to 70 F 2.8. And I say potential because I have not used this lens a ton professionally. I've gotten to use it a handful of times as my buddy owned it. And I think it is really solid giving you 17 to 70. Um, so for things like weddings, corporate videos, interviews, this gives you a little bit more flexibility on the focal length, all while the price still being really affordable. I think I've seen them used for around $460. So you wouldn't need to buy the adapter then. And this would make the entire setup even more affordable. So if you're wanting kind of a do it all lens, I give a soft recommendation to the Tamron 17 to 70. I would love to try out the lens more, see if it works well for my use cases and I think would be a solid option for people. So the reason it's not in my main option is because it is not the lens that I used for all those years. I still don't own it and I have loved the 18 to 35 and that would be what I push people towards, but did just want to give it as a potential option because it does have stabilization built in. So eliminates the no IBIS issue in the X-T3 and gives you that longer focal length. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful or encouraging. Definitely let me know down below in the comments if you have a different recommendation or a question about this setup. I think giving people shopping in this price point lots of options is really great. And ultimately it's just gonna come down to your use cases, your preferred way of working, and you're gonna learn more of that. As you dive into video, as you buy gear, as you try stuff out, you're gonna find workflows that work for you. So I just wanted to share what was incredibly helpful for me in getting started in hopes that it would help you. So catch you guys in the next one and peace.